Oh yeah! Rock on! What's up everybody? My peeps! How you doing my peeps? Peter Joseph here, once again for video number two! On your two for Friday! October the 20th, 2023! Right here, this time on the Peter Joseph YouTube Wrestling Channel, youtube.com slash Peter Joseph. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe right now to this very channel and my other channels down below in the basement, otherwise known as the Gobbledygook, and, or or otherwise known now known as the description box below. So like the video and, sh and subscribe to my ch this channel, my other channels as well. Like I said, and don't forget to. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you're real, if you're not, you need a fucking slap in the face. And a life. And don't forget to share the video all over the internet. Most importantly, tap that fucking bell. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss a goddamn thing. And if you do, well, fuck you, man. You're SOL. And you know what that means. <coughs> and that's pretty much it for that. So, once again, like, share, subscribe to the channels, leave a comment if you wish, and follow me on social media, share the video all over the internet, and don't forget to tap that bell so you get a whole lot more. And if this is your very first time watching, well, welcome to the party, pal! And I hope you enjoy the ride. If not, you can get off and go fuck yourself. That's pretty much it for that. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, video number two on your two for Friday. Check out my video over on the legendary rant channel, P PG Rant. Talked about how I'm just how I'm going to refocus uh, my channels and the way I just just basically I need a re I need a refocus on my life on and off this garbage festival website. So, just mainly going to focus on my reviews, uh, whatever other videos I do, use my music videos, my rants, if I ever do another one, and, uh, you know, my predictions videos, and anything else, else I basically uh, want to talk about. That's pretty much it. I'm not going to focus on, on uh, anything on this garbage website, I'm just gonna watch the people that I watch, and talk to the people that I talk to, my circle of friends here on YouTube, and not worry about what this person says, or that person says, or what video they do, or what, you know, I personally don't care, because when people make videos about me, it just gives me more popularity, and I've said it before, and i say it again, acknowledge me! And that's what you do. I don't acknowledge you do dumb fucks when I do a video. Because you think I do, and I don't. Because I could be talking about any other person that does does lame as fuck videos. I don't have to talk about you, and I don't have to drop names, unless I have to for reference, but... Other than that... Other than that, I really don't care about half you people on, on this godforsaken website. If you... If you just want to come in, come in, um, comments and, you know, just say the same go goddamn garbage that I've been hearing for so many years, call me the P-word, that, that, that's so far, at, so far out of left field and it's freaking old as fuck. Tw going on 12 years, 12 years. I mean, are we going to go for a record here? Are we going for 20? I mean, I'll be like near 70 and we're, you know, still, if YouTube is still around by then, which I doubt, but who knows? I could be 70 years old in, in you know, a freaking retirement home down in DeSantis country or maybe in, um, you know, somewhere else. You know, God forbid YouTube's still around. You know, all I'm, all I'm here is Peter's a pedophile, this and that. You know, remember what he said back in 2012? It's 2050, and you know. 
2015, you, you dumb fucks that are like 20, in your 20s and 30s, and some of you in your 40s are going to be going to be old or fucks. You know, pretty much the same old fuck you were, you were now, you are now, and you're going to be then. I think it's time to put a, you know, cap on it, because really, you should have put a cap on it, like, 2015, really, but you people just can't learn how to shut their mouths and, you know, think I, I admitted to things. The only thing I admitted to was what I did in 2012. And, but, and even after that, from 2015, it's all water under the bridge now. It's done. Doesn't make me a pedophile, doesn't make me a bad person. But if people think that I'm a bad person, well, fuck you, get off my channel. You're fake. I'm not. I'm real. And you don't like it? Pfft. Too bad, I don't like you either. Go do your garbage videos with your... Amount of subs that you get and the amount of views you get. Do I think I care? No. Do I care about how many views I get on here? Not really. Not really. I mean, it's nice if I get two, two, two thousand views. It's nice, but does it do anything? Does YouTube really do anything for me? Does it put money in my pocket? No. It's just a hobby. I like to talk. I like talk about wrestling. I like talk about sports. Well, wrestling is a sport. I like to talk about wrestling and other sports. I like to talk about music. That's basically been my life, you know? I like to talk about other things, like politics here and there, you know? Movies here and there. Or whatever I feel like talking about. You like it? Great, you know? Get the fuck off. Go do your own fucking video. Then nobody will watch. Unless, you know, your brainwashed subs that suck your, suck your tiny cocks. You know what? That's pretty pretty much all I gotta say. Man, you don't like me? I don't give a shit. You wanna keep instigating things in different chat, di different uh, comment, co video comments? That's on you, not on me. You think I'm instigating? No. If there's a video that kind of interests me, I'm gonna leave a comment. Whether it pertains to me or. You know, I dealt with back in the day. Whether it be an otaku video or anybody else's video, even an e if, you know, if I, I I always comment on Issa's videos, saying great video, Issa, you know, that but like, next thing you know, freaking, freaking, you know, freaking douchebags, freaking saying the same fucking thing. Oh, she's not gonna fuck you. Man. You know, pretty pretty soon, you know, you're gonna get blocked. If you haven't been blocked already, you should be blocked. I don't care how many fucking accounts you make. You're gonna get blocked. I mean, Issa doesn't really care about the comments, but... You know. It's the same BS. Zuzu's going crazy. Oh, you got a buggy. Go get the bug. You got a bug. Go get it. Get it. Yeah. Get it. Kill it. Kill. Eat. Kill. Yep. She's playing. She got a big old bug. It's a big old bug. Yep. I think she ate it. Let's see. Then what? Did you get it? Don't play with it. Kill it. You're a cat. You're supposed to kill. Kill. Did kill it. I don't know. Well, I'm not gonna even go look. She'll kill it eventually. She's weird, but you know, she's my Zuzu, the protector of this house, next to me. Did you get it, Booby? She's back. Did you get it, or you kill? Did you kill it or not? You're probably roaming. You're probably roaming around. It wasn't even a big bug. It was like a little bug. Yeah, what are you going to do? They come and go sometimes, you know? I mean, I, I clean my house. 
Not the greatest, but, you know. I don't have the greatest house in the world. I, you know, I don't wish I lived in a mansion. But, you know, make do what you have. You can have a great house. You can have a great car. You can have this and that. You know, good for you. You know, but there are others, you know, that, that you know, don't have the extravagant life, but make do. You make do. Even, even if you, you know, even if you are, you know, mentally dis disabled, you know. You know, you don't have a great life because you're mentally disabled, you know, autistic or whatever you are. You know, you get bullied and all that shit, you know. It affects you a lot, I know. It affects a lot of people, you know, on on YouTube and in real life, but you know, eventually, you know, gotta get over that, you know, and just live your life and just be be yourself. Be yourself. I've been bullied bullied most of my life, but you know, I really don't let it get to me, you know. Back in the day when I was really back back in my day, you know, I kinda like let let it get to me, and I got into a few fights here and there, but I always win. I always won. I, I might have lost one fight, because I got, I got, you know. I didn't get, I didn't get, like, sucker punched or anything like that, but, you know. And it wasn't because, you know, the person was bigger than me or anything like that. I didn't really, I didn't really lose... You know, guy took, like, one good shot. It, it staggered me, that's it. But, oh boy, did I get him back? I got him back good. He went after my friend and, like, really me messed him up. Didn't mess him up that bad. He, like, messed up his ear. Put it was in the hospital for a few days. I found out about it. Because he was, like, like, right across the street from me at the time. I found out about it. About it from an old friend of mine who's now passed away, and I was like, "What?" And then I went over. I went over to see how he is and everything. His mom, I know his mom. You know, I know his brother. Blah 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 blah. They told me what happened. I was like, "Oh man, if I see this guy again, I'm gonna." Re I'm, he's he's he's. Oh, it's over. It is over. He's gonna die. So I went to a, a basketball. Play some basketball with my friends, and he was there. Didn't really say anything to him the whole night, and then, you know, at the end of the night, he tried to start crap with me. Try to, you know, try to shove me into a stop, you know, one of those stop sign things. He shoved me, and I shoved, I shoved him right back, and then he tried to go after me. Boom! Knocked him out. Left it, I left him laying, man. It was great. And I went, I just went home. I just walked home and I, I was happy. And then his stupid parents come home and was like, Oh, your, your son knocked my son out. So I came, it's like, it's like I, I came, I, I went to this, his stupid parents. I say, it's like, next time, it's like, next time, he won't be, he won't, he'll, he'll be, he's lucky he got up. It's like, next time he won't get up. It's like, next time he messes with one of my friends, it's a wrap. But that guy, he long gone now. I don't give a fuck about that, that tall doof. He always tried to fight me when I was playing basketball with my friends in my friend's backyard. He thinks he's so bad and everything because he can't play basketball. Every fucking play, he fouls somebody hard. I'm like, what are you doing? Gonna hurt somebody. And he hurt, almost hurt my, my best friend, Al, my best friend Alex. Took a hard, he had a hard fa fall. I pushed him, I pushed the guy into the wall. He tried to push me back. I pushed him even harder into the wall. And I said, dude, it's like, either stop fucking fouling, fouling like you're freaking hacking everything. Like, like, it's like, either play some fucking basketball, like you actually can play basketball, I'm gonna put you through the wall. And it, it is what it is. But, 
I digress on that, so I'm not going to go into depth with any more of my, my old time stories that you all know and love. But, I lost tra track of thought. God damn it. But anyway, you know, check out my video down below, just refocusing and not giving a crap about what is said about me and on video and, you know, whatever. People think that they can own me and, you know, spread lies about me, thinking they can spread lies to people that I know that they don't give two shits, thinking that they can brainwash them with proof, which is irrelevant and invalid that I stalk people and I don't stalk people. I don't stalk anybody. You, st <laughs> these people, these people just have no fucking lives, and all they think about is me. Twenty four seven, three sixty five. It is, it's a proven fact. That's no cap. You have an obsession problem, and you need help. But what? Some, some of you people, the way you're going, you're gonna end up with a slammer, or you just, you know, you're just gonna have no future and no life. So, but like I said, you don't like me, don't give a shit. Do all the fucking boring as fuck videos you want. Don't care. I don't care. But just don't bring people into things that should not even be in it. When you want to do that, then you're going to go to jail. Bottom line. And if you think you're not, you are. Just remember, who saves things? And you can't turn it on me, so... Like, I'm the instigator when I'm not. It's called self-defense. So. You want to go that route? I can go even, I can go even, I can go that route, but I don't want to go that route. I don't do the tricks and, and pranks that these douchebags do. I don't do that. I don't need to. It's stupid. And it's a crime. So I'm not going to ruin my life by committing a crime by putting somebody's information out on the internet. Mm -mm. Never have, never will. So, take that for what it is. But, to all, the, all those people who think they, they, they can put me down and bring me down and everything like that, I got three words for you. Fuck you, man. I got another three words for you. Go fuck yourself. That's it. And that's all I gotta say about that. Alright, so check out the video down below on my rank channel. Doing pretty good so far. Get those get some get some more views, why not? My my rank channel's legendary, nobody can beat it. No matter how they try how hard they try. I'm gonna want to do a panel. I'm not gonna do no panel. I'm not gonna do no panel with somebody so they can, they think they can win. Oh, I out debated him. He's not. A, I out branded him. No. No. Because whatever you say is gonna be the same shit I've heard before. Tell me something I don't know. That's why you people that think that you can outrap me, you, you can't. You like seriously, you can't. So get over it. Go fuck yourself. Go do go do your own boring videos that nobody cares about. Call me out all you want. I don't give a shit. I don't. The same old bullshit. He's this and that. He said this and that. Spin your own narrative. Nobody's gonna care. I'm going to keep doing what I do, and that's do great reviews, do some satire, my, you know, my legendary impressions and everything, give good insight on wrestling and talk about music and just be myself. That's what you, some of you people need to do. Stop focusing on garbage drama and attacking people that, you know, really can't defend themselves. But certainly, to those people that can't defend themselves, you think you know them, but you don't. 
And they're gonna come back. And it's gonna be a wrap for you. So, you can think you're untouchable. Oh, he's not gonna do this. He's not gonna do that. Next thing you know, pfft, you're out of here. Man, the only person to blame is you. So, that's that. Alright. Alright, it's late. It's Friday night. And you know what that means. It is time for your late night. Smackdown review for October the 20th, 2023. We are emanating from the Frost Bank Center in that great, great city of San Antonio, Texas. Yep. Scared those Spurs that day, those Cowboys. Anyway, San Antonio's a shithole too. But I digress. Anyway. Alright, so we are two weeks away from Crown Full. Five, where uh, Roman Reigns will defend the, the undisputed Universal title against E. Y. Drake. That's not an insult. That's a fact of life. We got that on the show. Uh, we got a whole lot more on the show. Main event was for the WWE Women's Championship. My third wife, the, the vivacious, the gorgeous EO Sky. Take it on that horse face bitch, Charlotte Flair. We'll see what happens with that. What makes me mad? Or does do, or do I feel really happy? And we'll get to that in a little bit. And we got more matches announced for Crown Fool 5. We got four matches, I think, already announced. Got Roman's match, Seth, Ma Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight title. We got Mommy Rhea Ripley in a fatal five-way match for her title, her World Women's title. Um, Rey Mysterio and Logan Paul for the U.S. title. I think that's it for now. I think we're going to get maybe three or four more matches announced on the show. Possibly another uh, women's match. Who knows? I mean, we've got five women already there, so why not, have, why not have two more? Or three more. But, you know, other than that, kind of, uh, with other storylines going on, you know, with Jimmy, and Jimmy Uso, Solo, Cena, you know, setting up, setting up those matches, possibly, uh, for Survivor Series, and the return of World Games! In Chicago! Illinois, November the 25th, which is a couple weeks after after Crown Full. And then that's it for WWE pay-per-views. Well, well, NXT got deadline on December the 8th, I believe. Which which kind of coincides with, well, actually it's the week, uh, no, it's the week after. Week after that, we got AEW slash Ring of Honor's last pay-per-view of the year, Final Battle, not in New York. Tony Khan, when are we going to get a New York pay-per-view? For Ring of Honor. Can we get Final Battle back in New York where it belongs? When do we have to have it in a shithole city like Garland, Texas? The are fucking going to go there? Those cowboys, hey, they're cowboys, you know. And it's on a Friday night, which... Great job. I mean, I'll watch it late, late Friday night, you know, December the 15th, or early 16th. I mean, it's going up against freaking SmackDown and, and Rampage. Think anybody's going to watch that, watch Final Battle? At, at 8 o'clock? Probably not. Nobody. Like I said, I'm watching the replay, because I'm going to watch SmackDown and Rampage. I mean, I love Ring of Honor, but, you know, I'm going to have to watch it after Rampage. And then review it the day after. Should have been in New York. And the date was set, almost. They had December the 29th or the 30th locked in. What happened? Did some, is, is there an event at, at the Hammerstein that weekend? I mean, it's the final weekend of the year. Did something fall through? We couldn't get New York? 
We have to go to Garland, Texas? Again, like we were last year? What the fuck, man? Unless it gets changed. Unless it gets changed, I mean, this pay-per-view ain't gonna, nobody's gonna watch it. Nobody's gonna see it, because everybody's gonna be watching SmackDown that night. Which is basically nine days before the greatest day in the world. What's funny is Smack there's a SmackDown is actually a collision right before my birthday, which is great. Wrestling before my birthday, that's great. It's on a Saturday, because my birthday's on a Sunday, so well this year. Next year is on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. I mean, there's no I don't even think they're gonna well next year I don't even know if NXT's gonna be on the air live. Nah, probably won't be. Probably like a best of show. Or a tape probably tape show, not well, not uh best of. And then the week after that's New Year's Eve. Hmm? Next year. Of course, we got the leap year next year. Oh, well, yeah, 2024 is a leap year, so we get 29 days in February. So, got, it. got that 366 days. I mean, it is what it is. I got football on my birthday, and I think the Niners play. That's, that's always good, you know. I think they play. Actually, I have my book here. Let me get let me get the old trusty book of doom, the Bible of all uh, uh, sports talk. It is what it is. Let me go to the great 49ers page. Actually, they're playing on Christmas night. Uh, is that, uh they're at home. Yeah, they're at home. I can't even see. Is this an eight o'clock game? Yeah, actually, it is an 8 o'clock game because it's a 5 p.m. 5.15 start in Santa Clara. They're playing the Ravens. Ho, ho! Me and, o me and Otaku are going to have a war on Christmas. Holy shit. Who's going to get the better Christmas gift? Let's see. We'll see. By Christmas. See where the Niners are by then and where the, uh, you know, Otaku's Ravens are. But Christmas night. Niners football on Christmas. Yes! And they're playing on Thanksgiving night! You gotta love it. They should do it more often. Have the Niners on Thursday night football on, on Thanksgiving. Like, fuck everybody else. I mean, we gotta see Dallas. We gotta see Detroit. Because that's the usual teams that play on Thanksgiving. I think the Jets play too. No, the Jets play on Black Friday. That's weird. Friday night football. Why not? But that's gonna get swallowed up by freaking smack uh, tape SmackDown and the tape rampage. I don't I don't think uh, SmackDown is live on the day after Thanksgiving. I don't think it is. Probably not, but who knows? Who cares? Who knows? Who cares? Cause I know Rampage is gonna be in Chicago the whole weekend that whole weekend. Got the dynamite before Thanksgiving, then rampage before Thanksgiving, and then you got the Survivor Series in Chicago. Collision, I don't know where that's gonna be. Actually, I think Collision will be on Friday night. Going up against maybe a tape SmackDown. But still, a tape SmackDown is gonna gonna beat a possibly taped taped edition of Collision. Unless they keep Collision on that Saturday, which is could be live, but it's going up, going head to head with a live pay per view. So I mean, Survivor Series is probably going to be good. It's going to be great, probably. And then Collision is going to like eh, nobody's going to watch because we're watching Survivor Series. And a week before that, November seventeenth, Collision is going to get destroyed by. Freaking SmackDown because they're going head to head. So why I, I that's why I hate Saturday pay per views, especially when AEW does a Saturday pay per view, and they're gonna be doing it a lot probably next year. A, I mean a lot, probably probably in the summer too. We're probably gonna get the Friday night. I'm not even call it, call it a war. Call it a Friday, Friday Night Funeral. The SmackDown's ratings, especially when they go to the USA Network next year. 
I don't think they're going to get 2 million because it's a USA network. Like Fox, they get like 2.4, 2.5, 2.6. But when they go to when they go to Friday night on the USA network, you think anybody's really going to, like 2 million people going to watch? Maybe, maybe not. Probably get smacked down with like a 1.5. Compared to like Collision, which gets like pff, three to 500,000. So I mean, won't be a total funeral. But this when AEW has those Saturday pay-per-views, they gotta move it because they can't have collision on the same night. Can't do that. So Tony Khan is in, yeah. You know, he's got I know what he's gonna do. Cat's doing it again. I think he found it, found them. He found something. She's just playing around. Oh, she's playing around. The kitty's playing around. So, if you hear a little, little rustling in the back, it's just my cat being weird. Anyway. Alright, let's move on. Alright, so, EO versus Charlotte in the main event. And much more, much more on SmackDown tonight. And our commentary team, this, uh, on... On Friday Night SmackDown, we have the return of Mitchell Cole. So yeah, you just took Raw off, right? I don't, they, they, was, they, they had on ringside news, I think it was. They had like some reason why Cole took off Monday. Maybe he just needed the night off. I think he should have stayed there because, you know, we had to, we had to hear that boring, boring fuck Kevin Patrick for three hours. I felt bad for, you know, bad news Wade Barrett. He'll probably tell you himself, Kevin Pack sucks. Hunter! Nick Khan! Man, you know. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting by my email. I'm waiting for an email. You know, I'll send you a tape. I'll send Tony Khan a tape. I don't even have to send him a tape. I just send him a video. I'll send him a video. I'll do a new video. I'll just fly down to Orlando. Or not even Orlando. Well, Orlando for Hunter. You know? And I'll fly down to Jacksonville for, you know, with Tony. Or whatever he wants me to go. We're doing it in New York. How about that? He, he flies around like... You know, he goes around all the time. He flies like more, more often than Oscar goes back and forth to Japan. With EO. You know, Tony Khan, we can meet up at the Barclay Center or wherever you want to meet up in New York. We can do, you know, just set up a TV. I'll do, com I'll do the commentary. You know, I don't even need you. Maybe if you bring Tony Baloney, you know, over, I can do it, you know, be next to my friend, you know. Hey, Tony, you want to talk about the XPW, X, not even XPW, XF, XWF? What? Never mind. <laughs> Let's just do the commentary. Shut up! You just be legendary, I'll be over here. Ah, what a maneuver! No, I'm ready, man. I am ready for NXT main roster. I'll even do level up. <laughs> I, th I thought I didn't want to do that, but, you know, level up sucks, but, you know. Main event sucks. You know, God forbid I have to sit next to Byron Thaxton. Hey Byron, how's your um how's your nephew or your son uh you know uh Alfred? Used to he used to hang out with my good friend Issa. He still owes her a dinner at Applebee's. Well I think he did that already. I don't I don't know if that actually even happened, but if it did, great for him. Great. You finally paid paid your dues. You paid off that debt. Good job. Good job, Alfred. Good job. He's doing his own thing. But we move on. But like I said, Nick, Khan, Hunter, even you, Steph. Hi, Steph. Uh, you know, I'm ready. Tony, I'm waiting. And even you, Scott Damore. I'll go to Impact. Not that I want to go to Nashville. I mean, nothing bad about Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah! 
I mean, I'll, I don't go to Toronto. Did you kill that bug yet? Nope. It's dead. Good job. It's dead. She finally killed it. Took her a while. But she, you know when you know how when cats get these get the bugs or they get the rats and stuff like that, they play they kill it and then they start playing around with it like it's a big fucking toy. That's what she's doing. That's what she's doing right now. I'm not showing it because I don't want to. It's late and I don't feel like doing it. But take my word for it, she killed a bug. Not a big bug. Hmm, tiny little bug. Tiny little cockroach! I killed the cockroach! It's what a good, good old cat does. You stop playing with it? <laughs> oy, oy, oy. Cats are great. Yeah. I miss the. I, I, wish, I wish my other one was here to kill that. It'd be. If, if my cat Cookie were here, she, would, she wouldn't even destroy and play with it. She'd just, like, destroy it. But my cat. My cat doesn't even have claws. I mean, she just takes it and ki somehow kills it. <laughs> Boom! Done. Dead. Anyway. Alright, let's not talk about pets anymore. I talk about Zuzu too much. Why not? Okay. Alright, so let's get into this fucking shindig and let's get go to bed. we okay. got Got a lot of things to do tomorrow. I gotta do Rampage. I gotta do uh, Ring of Honor tomorrow. And I might do... Um, well, I gotta do Collision, and then Sunday, before I go out for my Sunday dinner, I gotta do, uh, Battle of the Belts 8, that's over on the Kill the Demons channel, so, tomorrow we're gonna get a lot of videos over on the KOD669 channel, the main channel, so, three videos on your Triple Threat Saturday, so, and much more if there's anything else that comes around. Actually, it might be a fatal four because I got to do a video about uh about the sad passing of Paulie from the Rocky movies. He passed away yesterday. Hmm, that hurts, man. That hurts. Hey, bro, Paulie, where you going, Paulie? Rock, beat up that bum, Rock. I'm gonna go smoke a cigar next to, you know, next to Mickey, you know? Me and Mickey gotta have a cigar in heaven, you know? I'll be, I don't know, I'll, you know. You go beat up those bums. Man. Paulie was a great, you know, a great, uh, the, well, the actor that played him. That played Paulie. Great actor. All the, Ro all the Rocky movies, even the Creed movies. So I think the, I think he did the, I don't know if he was in Creed 3, I think it was in Creed 1. Oh, I think it was in Creed 1 and, I think, 2. I don't I don't think it was in 3. But I... I digress. But he's been on Law and Order. The original... The, on various Law and Order SVU shows. He's been on a couple. But he's a great actor. But most people don't, you know, only remember him as Paulie. But he's been in other TV shows. He's a legend, and he's has sadly passed. He sadly passed away yesterday. So I'm gonna do a tribute video, uh, probably tomorrow. Do a really quick video. I'm not gonna do a long one. I don't think I'm gonna go that long. But just gonna do a tribute video to Paulie from, you know, just talk about his life and um, that's that. I mean, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, you know, he did a pretty nice little tribute to his good friend. Paulie, um, Carl Weathers, who played Apollo Creed, he, he said some stuff about, about him, um, uh, the guy that played Duke in the Rocky movies said some stuff, I think everybody in that movie basically said stuff, I think, I don't, well, I don't know if, I think he's still alive, Adrian, she said something, it would be funny if Hulk Hogan said something because he was in Rocky Three. You know, he almost freaking beat up Paulie. Thunderlips, brother, from another mother. 
The ultimate heartthrob versus the ultimate meatball. Who are you? I am the silent majority. I don't know many lines that Pauly would say in that movie, so in any of the Rocky movies, but I think the only the one iconic line he had was in Rocky IV. What do you see out there? I see three of them. Hit the one in the middle. Yeah, hit the one in the middle. And then Rocky went out, beat the fuck out of, uh, started beating the, beating the fuck out of Yvonne Drago. Wasn't for Pauly. Really, if it wasn't for, really for Duke and Pauly, Rocky would have got, Rocky probably would have got killed in, Rush, in Russia. And then again, think about it, Adrian came all the way from Philadelphia, or whatever, I think they lived in a, man, they, at the time, well, yeah, at the time, they lived in a mansion in Philly. Had a, had an epic fight with him the day before he went to Russia, and they played that epic theme song. Probably one of the greatest fucking songs next to Eye of the Tiger. Well, really, it is better than Eye of the Tiger. You know, Eye of the Tiger and freaking, uh, No Easy Way Out by, uh, oh, I forgot his goddamn name. Well, you know what I'm talking about. If you've got the Rocky IV soundtrack. That song is freaking epic. I mean, Eye of the Tiger is a, a great classic song by Survivor. But that one? Hmm. Probably has the most iconic, not, not, well, there's a lot of iconic guitar riffs. But that's probably one of the most iconic movie guitar riffs I've ever heard. Loved it. I love that. I love that guitar tone. I love. I love the the riff. I can play the riff by heart. It's easy. Not that. Not that easy. The solo is a little bit. Mm. So it starts off easy. Then it has that like weird, like near the end of the, you know, like, like did the guitar player just fuck up? <laughs> what happened? I mean, go look at the guitar cover. It, it, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It's just, it has, has that weird little section in it. That it feels like something got messed up or it skipped. Not, I don't think it's a skip. I think just think, it's just the... Like, the guitar player just did something weird. Because it took me a while to freaking, you know... took me a while to freaking learn it. And play it. But now, now I got the hang of it. Now, I no, I've been got the hang of it. I could play it easy. I just have to fix my guitar, and I'll show you guys. But I'm too lazy to freaking fix my goddamn guitar. I mean, I really gotta fix it. I gotta, I gotta take it to some, take it to like guitar center and fix it because the freaking whammy bar is stuck. I don't know how it got stuck. I think I tightened it too tight. Now I can't even freaking get it off because I gotta take the entire guitar apart. I gotta take the strings off and then then I gotta somehow rotor rooter the freaking whammy bar and I gotta take the the uh, what you call it? Uh, not the neck, but um the screws and the you know the thing with the guitar. You know you you screw the guitar. You know what I'm talking about? The bridge, basically. Yeah, the bridge. The bridge of the guitar, where the string, the, all the strings go. Then I gotta take out the back. Just get out the strings. I gotta take out the screws. It's, it's a mess. I mean, I have a friend that can do it for me, but he's always busy, and I sometimes I can never get in touch with him. I should have done it years ago. I'm too, like I said, I'm lazy. But. You know, eventually I'll get it fixed, or I'll just you know save off to get a new one, or I'll use my other my other ones. But one day, I keep saying that. I keep saying that. I said that for like 14 years. I'm gonna do start doing guitar covers because I have the guitar. 
I had the I had the amp. It's in the it's in the it's in the closet. But my pedals are all kind of shot. But you know, with some tweaking, I can fix it. So eventually, I'm gonna get to that. But anyway, okay. All right, 45 minutes. I talk about bullshit. All right, so we have Michael Cole, Kevin Patrick Milov, and Corey Slave on commentary. So we start off SmackDown with a the longest fuck recap of what happened last week with E, Thai, Drake, and and his, and his good buddy John Cena confronting the Bloodline last week. Roman coming back last week. Sol, uh, Solo Mibuki and Jimmy Uso. So we get all that and a bag of chips. And then we start off SmackDown. We get like a Big freaking view from my like, God's country. And we see like this guy in the ring. I'm like, I wonder. Oh, I'm like, damn, that far we can see pa Paul Heyman's fat ass, you know? So we start off with the wise man. My name is Paul Heyman. And. And Paul talks about how. How Jimmy Uso caught Jay and Cody the tag team belts on Raw. Before he moves on to what happened on, you know, it's going to happen at Crown Jewel, which is going to be Eli Drake and Roman Reigns for the undisputed Universal Title. So then he insults the Texas crowd. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Houston's kicking kicking uh, Texas's ass. By the way, <laughs> oh, you thought that Houston was going to get swept? Yeah, right. Really, should have been up three one by now, but. You know, give credit where credit is due. But everybody thought the a the assholes, the Astros were gonna go bye bye. No, 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 no. They barely won tonight. What earlier? Well, earlier today, tonight, they won. I believe uh, six to. F I think they won six to five in Texas. So now the series is not at. Two games apiece. Game five, I think, is tomorrow, or it's in uh, on Sunday, because I think what's well, in Houston, they don't have to travel that far, so. I think game five is either tomorrow or Sunday. And uh, in the NLCS, oh, everybody thought that the Diamondbacks were, were dead and buried after the first two games where Philly just basically mopped the floor with them. In Philly, that shithole, they went back to Arizona, and Arizona... Man, Thursday night, last night was a great game. Great pitching duel. Nodded at one. And good old Craig Kimball <coughs> does what he does best. Because that's what he did on the with the Braves. Uh, you sent them away, you bitches. He choked it. Guy gets on base. Guryo uh, gets on base, I think, with a lucky walk. So, you know, there's a, there's some some pitches that the freaking umpire missed. How do you miss that? But well, anyway, gets on base, easy stolen base. He you know, had a great jump. Got the second base easy. Then um, I think he goes to he goes to third base on an infield single. His first and third, nobody out. Next guy. Hits a rocket to a uh, shortstop. Guyo, uh, we slid around the tag. He could have won the game, and somehow the catcher tagged him out right before he hit the hit the you know got the plate. So his first is second with one man out, and then I forget what happened after that. I think um. I think it was first and second, and then like, I think um, Kimball got the next guy out. But anyway, uh, I think it was it was first and third, and then the big time hitter Marte, not Marte from the Mets. Fuck that guy. I hope he gets gets so uh, freaking traded. Uh, he hits the single to win the game for the Diamondbacks. Um, made it two games to one, and then the Diamondbacks came out fast, strong. They were up two. They were up uh, two to one. And then they won. They won. I think five to three or something like that. They, I know they won, but I forgot what the score was. But 
that series is now tied at two games apiece. So, the AL and NLC Championship Series is a freaking series now. Best of three series. I love it. To see if the Astros can win, can win that series. I think they could. I think it might go seven. I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, I think the Phillies are going... I think they got one more game in Arizona. And then they go back... They go back to Philly for game six and seven. I'm going to have to see. I'd love for Arizona to, to sweep at home. Sweep the next... Get, win game five. Go to, go to, go to Philly, which is going to be, you know, hectic. I really do not want to see Houston and Philly in the World Series again. I don't... I'd love to see Houston and the Diamondbacks go at it. I think that would be a pretty interesting series. Or... Texas and Texas and Arizona. I mean, Degrom and Scherzer maybe getting you know. Oh, that would be great. Who to root for? Texas against Philly? Eh, no. I hate. We hate Philly, and we got two you know backstabbers and Degrom and Scherzer. Damn, who do we root for? I'd rather root for Texas just because of Degrom, but. Just, just to shut the, the fucking Philadelphia crowd up. So all, all their fan base is garbage. Move on. Alright, enough about that. Blah, 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 blah. Alright. Uh, where was I? I gotta get my notes straight. Okay. Alright, so Heyman insults the Texas crowd. Says, everyone here is a fan of Eli Drake, just like I am. And therefore, you must watch Crown Jewel. Nice pitch, nice uh, sales pitch there, Paul. Because Eli Drake is going to get smashed for the last time by the Tribal Chief. Mr. 1148 days as of this video. Right now. Late, late, uh, late, late Friday night. Early Saturday morning. 1,148 days of the Tribal Chief. And counting. So next week, he will be over 1,150 days. 1,154 to be exact. So when he hits Crown Jewel, he'll be at 1,162 days. Because it's later later time in Saudi Arabia. So he will be officially 1,162 days as champ. And he's going to wipe the floor with Eli by the time he gets through. I mean, two weeks, basically three weeks later, which is 21 days. So he'll be at 1171. Uh, wait, no. It's 1147, 1154. Yeah, 61. All right, so 21. He'll be, so after Survivor Series, if he defends the belt and retains it, He'll be at 1,182 days. So, right before, right by the end of the year, he'll be over 1,200 days as camp. Barring something happening before then, but we'll see. But, if he's going to definitely hold the belt. He's going to break Hogan's three-year record as champ. Over 1,250. He's going to destroy that. And then, really, the next major step he has to get is Hogan's five-year reign. So, he has to hold it for another year into 2025. Beat Hogan's record. And next up is Bob Backlund's record, which I think is on six, six, seven years. And then, the big one is Bruno at over 2,800 days, which is eight-plus-year reign. So, right now, he has to go four and a half Four and a half to five and a half more years as champ. Can he do it? Yes. I think he can. I think he will do it. But does WWE want to break the record that never can never be broken? Like Ric Flair's record? I know that's going to be broken. That's definitely going to be broken by Charlotte Flair. But we'll have to see what happens with, with all that. But... 
I mean, records are meant to be broken, and I think Ric Flair's record of and John Cena's record will be broken by Charlotte Flair in the next three to five years, at least. And Bruno's? That's a toss-up right now. I mean, we're having fun right now. We're, like, technically, I don't even know what inning we're in. Cody said we're in the fourth inning. You gotta, you gotta ask Paul Heyman and Rowan what inning we're in. Are we, like, halfway through? If we're halfway through... I think he's gotta say we're halfway through. We're, about, we're in, like, the fifth, sixth inning by the time WrestleMania hits. It's like, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty now. No, sixth, we're in the sixth inning. Not, we haven't hit the stretch point yet. We haven't hit the seventh inning stretch yet, which probably would be around SummerSlam when he hits four years. I mean, just enjoy the ride. If you don't like it, fuck you, man. Rowan needs to lose the belt! To who? Who? Not gonna be Eli. It may not be Solo. I mean, it'll give him a good run with... One for his money. Walter. Everybody's saying Walter's gonna do it. I doubt that, but... Braun Breaker? That's another name people are gonna be hush-hush about. People think Ciampa. <laughs> no. It's gonna be nobody. There's gonna be nobody left. They can make all the, all the schmucks from... Not the schmucks, actually. All the, all the men from NXT... Come on, the Mellow, Trick, Ilya Dragunov. I'd love to see that. Roman against Ilya Dragunov. Hmm. I think that would be a real good... Well, maybe Dragunov goes for the world title. I don't think he's worthy to go against Roman. But if he did, he would get smashed. But... Braun Breaker, Solo Sokoa, and Walter, I think are the three top guys in that company right now can really... Really hurt Roman. I, you know, we ran, ran the gamut with Jimmy and Jay. We really ran the gamut with that bitch Cody. We th they think they want to do it again, November the seventeenth. I hope not. Well, we're gonna get you know it'll be the greatest ratings pop ever for WWE because that a really killed Collision. That's the main event right there. What's Collision's main event gonna be? You can't do any. You can't really do anything because you got MJF and Jay White the next night. So you really have to put something on for the main event of Collision going up, going head to head with Roman and Cody at the end. There's nothing there. There's probably not going to be anything Tony Khan can do because Roman, forget it. He can just do a segment talking for five for fifteen minutes. That gets like 3 million views. You could have Mercedes Monet come back and that, at that end segment. Not going to generate that many views, but still, it's Mercedes Monet, you know? But, I don't know. I don't know. I, whatever Collision has on November the 17th is not going to even come close to what the main event for that show is. If it's Cody and Roman, which is being rumored for that show. I hope not, but... I mean, do we really want to see Roman lose the belt on a SmackDown to, to that bitch Cody? No. Oh, he's going to lose it at WrestleMania 40. Yeah, to who? The Rock? Pfft. No, it's going to be it's gonna be Walter. Could be Walter. Could be Solo. Depending on how, on how the, the storyline goes from here. We're really gonna see Jimmy and Jay. That's a that's a that's a fact. I mean, because the the storyline with them going on going is they're gonna lead up until uh, to War Games at Survivor Series, and then the storyline's gonna keep going to Royal Rumble where they eliminate each other, and then maybe both are in the elimination chamber, beat the crap out of each other, or or screw one screw each other, not like that, but you know what I mean, and then. By the time we hit March, we're going to get a big, long month of Jimmy and Jay beating the crap out of each other. Saying, I'm going to face you at WrestleMania. It's in the city of brotherly love. Why not? Why not have that match in Philly? 
I mean, it fits. Probably love, yeah, not in that city. Like I said, Philly's a shithole. God forbid it's it, the weather there is bad. Ugh. Let's well, in your 40 for, with a high temperature of 40 degrees at bell time. Oh, whoo boy. You can see people in their parkers, you know, clinging on to each other. You know, poor freaking Issa's going to be there in the press box. You know, should be up top in the press box. Hopefully it has enough heat. Because, <coughs> I mean, God forbid she has to go down. She'd probably be on the feet. You know, on the field and everything beforehand, just to, you know, take pictures and video and everything. But then she's gonna, it's like, I'm out of here. Freaking, it's too cold here. I mean, she's lived in New York most of her life. Now she lives in hot as fuck Puerto Rico. <coughs> so she knows the two, she's gonna know a good thing or two about cold weather here in New York and in Philly and in Chicago, if you think about it, because Chicago is probably gonna be snowing by. November to by Thanksgiving. Because it starts early if you're in Minnesota country and you live in Chicago because you kind of get the lake effect snow machine. But we'll see what happens with that. All right, let's finish this segment off. Uh, anyway, so Eli comes out and says, I'm not here to talk to you, Paul. So get Roman out here right now. Well, Roman comes and goes. Does whatever he wants because he's the champ, bitch. So he was like, "I'm out of here. Fuck this shit. I'm out." You know, even though uh, you know, Eli said, "Hey, Paul, you can get out of here. Oh yeah, where's Roman? Get Roman out of here." But then Eli's like, "All right, Paul, get back in here." So Paul kind of slowly gets in the ring. Eli asks what Roman is going to be doing doing to him, but won't let Paul answer that. So his, Heyman's like, well, you're not going to let me talk. I'm out of here. So Eli threatens to knock his hair back to gray. Ooh. And he says, the word on the street is last week's spear was just a warning shot. And Eli knows Roman is scared of him. Yeah, right. You're my boy and all, Eli, but you know for a fact you're going to get destroyed. Anyway. He's like, as fast as I have risen through up through WWE, as fast as I'm going to take the title from Roman. And then he's like, yeah. And Paul's like, and then Eli's like, that really bothers you, doesn't it? And he's like, no, I, I actually like it. I like saying, yeah, yeah. So he was like, say, yeah, 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 you know. And he's like, you're pathetic. So Eli wants to know whose game it is. And the crowd's like, Eli, Drake, yeah! Tells Heyman to tell Roman who's waiting for him at Crown Jewel. So as Eli leaves, Heyman, Heyman gets on his phone and goes, Call Roman Reigns. That was it. Next week, we got a contract signing between Eli and Roman. You know how those contract signings end up. Chaos. It is what it is, because that's the final live SmackDown, and it's on FS1 next week because of the freaking wor start of the World Series. I think that's actually Game 1 of the wor game one or Game 2 of the World Series. Probably Game 1. Yeah, I think it's Game 1 of the World Series. Whether it be in Houston, whether it be in Arlington, Texas, or be in Phoenix, or it's going to be in that shithole in Philadelphia. So, SmackDown on FS1 next week. So the ratings won't be that good next week. So maybe, nah. It's not. I mean, rampaging gonna beat it, but still. And then after that, SmackDown is gonna be taped on November the third because they're gonna be in Saudi Arabia. So they're gonna be taping SmackDown uh, probably that weekend. They're gonna probably well, actually, they'll probably tape tape the live show October the twenty seventh, and then. Afterwards, afterwards, at 10 p.m., they're going to tape two more uh, two more hours of, of television. 
And then right after that, I mean, that's it. November the 3rd is a taped SmackDown going up against the taped Rampage. And then, and then Saturday, you got, I mean, you got to have a lo- whole day of wrestling, which is crazy. You got you got Crown Jewel at 1 p.m. That's going to end about 4, eight, four maybe before 5 o'clock. And then you got you get a little break. Go to take a shit. Go do whatever you got to do. Have a nice late lunch or early dinner. And then 8 o'clock, a live edition of Collision. So, that's that. So, I mean, it doesn't... I mean, Collision won't be affected or anything because I don't have a pay-per-view that weekend. So, I mean, Collision, I'd probably do good ratings. But still, you know, people will be more invested in, in the day. They're going to be more invested in Crown Jewel. Because, I, But the thing is, it's at a 1 o'clock start here in the East... So by the time it ends, it better be around four, maybe close to four thirty, or so. So then after that, people are gonna do their you know post shows, and then everything. Then they're gonna probably take a break, then watch Collision, then do another post show for Collision, or just take the night off and then do it tomorrow, the next day, whatever. Well, we'll see what happens with that. All right, moving on. All right, so I gave that first segment three point two five out of five stars. I think it was a good promo between Paul and Eli. And we'll see what happens next week with that contract signing. And Roman will be back live to grace us with his epic presence. And that's it. Alright, then we go to the back where we have a buff, rough, gizzled, and jacked. Montez Ford, man, he went to the gym. And you see all those abs he has? Like, damn, he is built. You don't have to take those steroids. He's there with Angelo Dawkins and Bobby Lashley. Firing up, firing, bleh, firing him up for his match, which is coming up right, right now against Santos Escobar of the LWO. So, this is our first official match tonight. We only had three matches. SmackDown was really storyline based and really promo based tonight. That's okay. But anyway. Alright, so we get to this match. Uh, Joaquin Wild, you know, DJ Zima, Ion, and Raul Mendoza were there. And uh, Selena Vega and Rey Mysterio were not there. We're going to hear from Rey later. And we're going to see Selena Vega later. But anyway, uh, Dawkins is at ringside with his partner, Montez Ford. Bobby is watching in the back. Why didn't he come out? I don't know. But anyway, it's also with Montez starting fast and furious. Ron Santos over for an early near fall. Followed by one hell of a drop kick. And then commentary starts talking about that Cornito. I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. By the way, can, can Hunter. Hunter. You're my boy and everything. But why did you change Cornito's theme? Did, did Carlito even sign off on that? I hope he didn't. Because this theme, it, it pretty much sucks. It sucks. You know, we all know Carlito, you know, with his theme. I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. And then we get this thing like, that's not cool or whatever is the, the intro is. I'm like, what? What is this? But anyway, they talk about that Carlito is back in WWE for the first time in a decade. Yeah, I guess you forgot him uh, coming back at, you know, Payback. Or even last year. You forget, we forget about that? How do you forget? Somebody didn't do their homework. (coughs) And we move on. Anyway, Santos tries to fight back against Knox to the floor. And then we go to an early break. Montez Ford trying to be Tony Storm, you stupid ass. He's like by it. He like like knocks Santos to the floor and he go, he goes up right in the robes and the camera's like right on him and he was like, We'll be right back after these messages. Like Tony Storm did uh, like about a uh, I think it was like a week ago or earlier this week. 
Everything that AEW does, WWE has to somehow add in. Next thing we know, we'll get a tiny, you know, a guy doing a, you know, a, a basic Tony Storm gimmick. Timeless, some somebody, you know. We have a jobber with with a stupid black and white entrance. Timeless Barry. Oh, that'd be funny. That would be hilarious. <laughs> no, but uh, no, no. Barry always old. He's not that old. I think he's around 60. I think he came around the same time as good old Barry Horowitz. Man, he should be in the Hall of Fame, by the way. That man should be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, we don't even... We only have one jobber in the Hall of Fame, with, which is Iron Mike Sharp. That's weird. How... How do you forget half the jobbers that, like, lined up the 80s? Barry. Oh. You know, Barry Gill. You know, Gil Gil not, Gilberg. That's, uh... Barry. I think it's... I keep thinking it was Dwayne Gill, but I think it's Barry Gill. I, whatever. <laughs> now, Barry Gill was, I think, one of the one of the Bee Gees. But anyway. Dwayne Gill, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Barry Horowitz, probably the first jobber I know, next to Iron Mike Sharp and Barry O. You know, it should be also be in the Hall of Fame. Outback Jack, tiny kangaroo down, sport, tiny kangaroo down. Just saying, you know, all these jobbers, like freaking Paul. It wasn't really a, uh, in his early days. Paul Roma was a jobber. Jumping Jim Powers, remember him, Power and Glory? Well, the early version. Powers and Roma should be in the Hall of Fame as a tie team. Really, Power and Glory should be in the in, in the Hall of Fame as a tag team. Why aren't they? I don't know. I don't know. I think Demolition is in. It should be in. I don't know why they're not in. If they're, if they're in, great. If they're not, why? Jumping on Bomb Angels, they're not in. Why? I, I, I think very next year's uh, class of uh, 2024 is basically going to be maybe Philadelphia-based. You know, Hoy Heyman might go in. I doubt it, but, you know, it's Heyman, but it's Philly, so... We might get some ECW guys, or we should just have an all ECW Hall of Fame next year. I know they're gonna put a they gotta put a woman there. So who do you put in? Beulah McGillicuddy or Francine? And then I I would think the first guy to go in should be Paul. He's the owner. Then maybe Todd Todd Gordon. You know, gonna put R well, RVD will be in twice. Uh, you know, again because it'll be a second one. If you can get Taz, you know, you might have to talk to Tony Khan about that. But you know, hey, uh, we're, we're gonna put Taz in the Hall of Fame. Can we get him, Tony? Tony's like, uh, no. <laughs> no, he'll probably let him go. But it's Taz, uh, Tommy Dreamer. You know, you don't have to really talk him out of that. Out of impact. You know. Terry Funk's already in. Terry! You know. Mick Foley, already in. Sam, they'll probably put the same man in. They have to, because, I mean, he's ECW. Sabu! And then you want to go to tag teams. I think the first tag team you should put in... That's a... Hmm. Why? Well, I, I would think the, the... The... The tag team you put in for ECW... Would be the... the, the either the Dullies... Or the Eliminators... You know, Perry Saturn and John Cronus... Or... Dare I say... They put the Gangsters in... You know... Mustafa and... Jerome... You summon motherfucker... No, no, Jerome. Jerome, put the site down. 
I just wanted you to know that you, you could be in the Hall of Fame next year. For what? Well, first of all, being a sick motherfucker. And two, for being, you know, in a tag team with your boy Mustafa. I don't like that motherfucker. I don't like him either. I'll take that sight and go away. Motherfucker. <laughs> ah, good old Jerome. You got to love him. Another guy should be in the Hall of Fame. You know, his good buddy. Mike! What? Get in here. Uh, what do you want, Gilmore? Uh, Joseph. Uh, I keep forgetting that. Sorry. Anyway, what do you want? Uh, you know, I we, all, we, we were just talking about the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I know it should be in. I don't know why. Well, one, you're dead. I'm not dead. Uh, you got that halo, remember? Ah, fuck. By the way, Mike, I went to a I went to a five and dime store and I I saw a Dragon Ball. The big ass fuck Dragon Ball for fifteen bucks. Why didn't you buy it? You just wish me back to back back to life. Uh, it's not a real Dragon Ball, dude. Ah, shit! I gotta stay here. Well, pretty much. The rest of your goddamn life, dude. Ah, fuck! I'm only thirty. Nah, you're not thirty, dude. You may look thirty, but you're not thirty. But you still look good. Oh, thank you. But yeah, you should be in the Hall of Fame, man. I know. Anyway, uh, say goodbye. Bye. Get out of here. If you don't like my impressions, fuck you. Think I disrespect the dead? Fuck you. You do it. I like to see you motherfuckers actually try to do that. And be more entertaining. But you can't. You can't do it, brother. Not no way, not no how. And if you don't like my impressions, my good friend Shane Douglas... We'd like to have a few words with you. Shane? The franchise. Yes, I know you're the franchise. You want to say your line? Yeah, okay. You suck then, and you suck now. And if you don't like it, you can suck my ass. Franchise. Children. Oh, right. Go back, go back. Go hang out with Francine. Tell us at all. I would love to be Shane Douglas in real life. I just would. I met Francine way back when. She's a doll. Ooh, smoking hot back then. Oh my. Ugh. Oh, I, I have to do. I have to do it. I have to do it. Got to do the good old Shane Douglas, you know. Got to do it. But Francine is a doll, man. She loves it. Like I. Frequently, not for all the time, but I, I like to comment in her chat room when she's live. And I sometimes comment on her video saying, you know, I remember this, I remember that, you know. She hides my comments, she likes it. Well, I think she does that to everybody, all, all, of, all her fans or some marks that comment on her videos. Not like the first time, but you know. But I met Francine back in the day. I, I haven't met Shane Douglas, but I li I'd like to meet him. Talk about the franchise. She talked about Bam Bam Bigelow. Talk about Chris Candido. Talk about all those good times in ECW. Just just shoot the shit. We're not even shoot the shit. I just like shake his hand. Talk a little bit about ECW and, and that's not it. Take the picture, you know, do, do this. Do the, th oh, we could do this, or do this. Take the picture and say goodbye, shake the guy's hand, and that'll be it. But man, I would love to meet Shane. I met Tommy Dreamer, I met the Sandman. I even met Balls Mahoney, God rest his mighty soul. And Axel Rotten, God rest his mighty soul. The only person I didn't meet was the Shaw. I mean, I did see him, but I never met the guy, you know. 
Balls! Axel! Show off! I remember meeting Balls the second time because I met him once. I remember the first time was like at that stupid fucking playground. Not the that playground. There's Fun Time USA. Remember that if you live in Brooklyn? Met him there for some some stupid TV show that was on cable access. So it was a uh, Ring Fever. We all the cure. Yeah, they got a lot of flack though from a lot of wrestlers. But I digress. Anyway. I think it was RVD, I think it was RVD was there, yeah, RVD was there with Balls Mahoney, and I met, I met Balls, he signed my ECW magazine, yeah, ECW had a magazine back in the day, I still have it somewhere, with RVD's uh, signature on it, I have it somewhere, but anyway, second time, Ring Fever did something, um, near my, it was like, this place near my, Near where I live now. Like, down by, you know, the water. They were doing this, like, little concert thing. And then they had Joe Gertner was there. Um, Sandman was there. Balls Mahoney were there. I think a couple other people were there. And I met Balls again. I asked him about... This was, like, 2000... When, what year was that? 2000... I think it was a few years later. Before, I think it was when ECW was about to be bought by WWE. Or was bought by WWE. Around that time. And I asked him about it. He's like, it's not the same ECW. I don't like it. And I said, would you ever work for Vince? He's like, no. Well, guess what? He did. Remember when, when um, was right around, right around, uh, 2004, 2005, when they had the ECW invasion. Now, actually, it was 2001, because I have the shirt. My mom, my, my dad has it now, but it's still my shirt. Uh, yeah, I met him 2000, I think it was 2001, 2002, when they had the invasion angle. And I asked him, I asked him about it when, when ECW programming was on WWE. He's like, it's not the same. He's like, would you ever work for Vince? No. But you're on, you're on his program. You, you, I mean, when he bought the company and kind of run it, ran it into the ground, WWE, ECW, guess who was on half those shows on Tuesday nights on Sci-Fi? Boss Mahoney. So he lied. Same man even worked for him. He didn't want to work for Vince. Remember the first episode of WWE ECW where the same, they show the Sandman fighting the goon? Well, not even the goon. It was a zombie. Beat the fuck out of him. The zombie from Parts Unknown. <laughs> Crazy shit. Anyway, we move on. Alright, so uh, back to Santos and Montez. Montez takes us to break, which I thought was funny. Uh, we come back. Montez comes off the top with a backwards bulldog. Hmm, that's interesting. I never saw that move, but I, I mean, I looked at the match tonight. And I was like, whoa, what was that? Look like a, I, I think the commentary called it a reverse DDT. Yeah, right. Anyway, Escobar knocks him to the floor. Then, then we get a big flippy dibbity doo by Santos taking Montez down. But then Angelo Dawkins pulls him to the floor. Then they have a fight on the outside. I'm like, where's the fucking DQ here? Which allowed Montez to grab a fruit roll up with the tights. One, two, three. Hey, they get, on, they get the win in under nine minutes. So Montez Ford gets the win over Santos Escobar. Match gave. 2.5 out of 5 stars. And then afterwards, get a 2 on 1 beat down. And then uh, Montez and uh, you know, the Santos get, got beat up a little bit. And then Joaquin Wild and Raul Mendoza come in. They get beat up. And then Gordito spits in the face of people who don't want to be cool. He runs in with a chair for the save. Hmm. 
So I have to see what happens with that. Maybe we see Carlito on his first match next week, or maybe at uh, Crown Jewel. We'll see. And we move on with with that. So once again, two and a half out of five stars for that. Then we go to a post break promo where we see the LWO. The kind of little little bit banged up. Santos is banged up. Uh, Ra- Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wild they're banged up, and then. Rey Mysterio, booyaka, booyaka, or as we, as we, you know, with his mask, look like Batman, and a little bit like Dragon Lee when he had the Batman mask. Like, what the hell, is that, Dragon Lee, is that you? But it's Rey Mysterio, and the lovely Zanina Vega. Ooh, get it, get Watch out for the chunkla. Anyway, uh, Rey says the LWO is family, you know, you were not out there for the match, and neither were you, Selena Vega. And says, I have to go, I have to go now, I have to deal with Logan Paul. And then, and then Selena Vega says, like, you want me to come out with you? You know, you know, you saw what happened to, you know, Santos and, and the boys here. You know, maybe you need some guidance, you know, some protection, I guess. Uh, so Ray's like, no, 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 I don't need it. I'll be fine. Respectfully declined. And that's pretty much it. So we'll see what happens with Ray and that idiot Logan Paul a little little later. So I gave that segment two and a half out of five stars. Then we get a video on the Ooh the Yes Boys. They're back. Elton Prince and Kit Wilson, who follow me on Twitter. Yes boys! Gotta love it. Anyway, they're at the spa. I took the spa. They go to the spa, they have a spa day, you know, get a massage, they're doing their, ha- their gold, you know, great hair, they look, they look great. And then they're, uh, you know, I think they were getting uh, pedicures, they had the feet in the pedic, um, you know, pedic, uh, pedi, pedi wash, whatever it was. And then, and then Rich Holland and Butch, they come in. Jump from behind, beat the fuck out of them. They dunk their heads in the bat in the freaking pedicure water. Ugh. Nasty. I don't know what's in that water. I don't want to know. I've never been to a spa, but you know, that was nasty. So you know, the Yes Boys, you know, came back last week. You know, Elton Prince fate being hurt again, and they get the get a cheap win. Still, some win is a win. And, you know, Rich Holland and Butch got all pissy pissy. Now they had to dunk their head, their heads and mess up their, their good looks. Come on. That's not nice. That's not fair, the flair. But anyway, I gave that segment three out of five stars. Alright, then we go into the Bloodline locker room. Or the dressing room, whatever. The Bloodline room. Jimmy Uso brags about costing Jay and Cody the tag team belts uh, on Raw this past week. He's like, yeah, you see what I did? I'm like the quarterback. Yee, 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 yee. Do you feel him, sir? No, that's Jay. Sorry. But anyway, you know, Jimmy thinks he's still a quarterback calling plays. Like, look, you see what I did? You see what I did, Paul? And, and Soul's like, Staring him like, shut up! So anyway, brags about what he did on Raw, but Paul, Paul sees John Cena arrive on the monitor, and then that basically ends the segment. Okay. So I, I think, uh, like, Jimmy is like, alright, we're gonna, we're gonna leave. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much it. So I get that three out of five stars. Alright, then we go to a very interesting segment by the so the self-proclaimed goat. But he's not the goat. Which the goat of all goats is still and will always be the Undertaker. Sorry, Esau, I gotta be real. Woman woman has to take a back seat to the Undertaker. He just does. I'm sorry. He might be number one in your heart, but he's number one in my scorecard. 
He's number one on my list. Roman, sadly, has to be number two. Sorry. But anyway, John Cena comes out. Fans give him the usual, Thank you, Cena! Nobody fucking cares! And then he gets him like, all right, I'm like, yeah, we're on SmackDown! But then he gets a little bit serious for a minute. He says, I had a rough day with some honest truths hitting him. Yeah, the truth is you're not the GOAT. And you suck. And your fans do too. Hey, kids. Hey, kids. Find the Uncle Shuffle. I do it for the kids, children. I love the kids. Uh, you know, I'm back here. I'm going to lose again. Uh, then I'm going to go do another crappy movie. I'm never coming back. I'm going to be in the Hall of Fame next year. Uh, did it for the kids. Anyway, Cena talks about how Roman has had an incredible streak as Universal Champion. 1,148 days as of now. But Cena's like, well, I have a streak of my own, and that's 2,002 days since he last won a TV ma a singles a TV match, well, a singles match on TV, I should say. That dates all the way back to 2018. Five years he hasn't won on TV? Wow. I did not know that. I thought he, you know, he been, well, he... You're still around in 2019. I thought he won some matches in 2019. I might, have to go, I might have to go back and look at my Raw and SmackDown reviews from that year. I could I could have sworn he had a, he won that, uh, at least a match. I don't know. That's kind of kind of shocking to hear that. Anyway, so then he brings up the old R word, retirement. I'm like, oh, we get, oh, is he just pull, is he pulling a sting here? Really? I was like, oh, is your last Mac coming out the Illumination Chamber? I mean, it's in February. Like, Sting. Unless there's revolutions in March. But yeah, basically Cena pulled a, pulled a fucking Sting. He said, and he goes, it's time that we all face facts. And the fans kind of knew. He's like, yeah, you still got it. Cena says, I still believe in all this and said it's time to turn the math around. Then he calls out, he says, the next guy that comes through that that curtain or come, comes down that aisle is going to get smoked. So, who should come out? Solo, me bookie. Solo Sokoa comes on, even though there's no ref. And we didn't hear no bell rock. So, he comes out, slowly gets in the ring. Tries to go after Cena, but then Jimmy Uso comes from behind and super kicks him right in the face. And then, and then Jimmy's like, tell Solo to finish him off. Solo tries to finish him off, and then, and then we see some guy in a hood grabbing Jimmy's Jimmy's leg, goes after him. Security breaks it up, and it's Jay Uso, main event Jay Uso. They start fighting outside the ring. Security and referees try to break this up. Or he kind of didn't break it up at first and then started breaking up. You know, Jimmy calls for timeout. There's no timeouts in wrestling. Anyway, back in the ring. Solo gets back in. Throws up that spike. He's like, Aah! and then Cena gets out of it and picks up Solo. Hits the AA and then... Basically, nothing happens, so no match, unless they're going to do it next week. And then that's it. That's it, for now. And, uh... We move on with that, so... So, I was thinking, maybe we get Cena and Jey Uso teaming up against Jimmy and Solo... I guess we won't we won't know until maybe Monday when Raw is in Dallas, Texas. We'll see. Alright, so I gave all that 3.25 out of 5 stars, and that's it. Alright, then we got a look at Logan Paul winning that garbage fest of a boxing match last weekend. Then he makes a challenge to Rey Mysterio for the US title, 
and then Ray went on the Pete, Peter Rosenberg show and accepted the cha- accepted the challenge for the U.S. title. So we get that. Then after that, we get a look at the Judgment Day of the law firm where Finn and Priest winning the tag team belts. Well, we gained, well winning the title tag team titles back on Raw for the second time. So we saw that thanks to Jimmy. And then we go to uh, Nick Aldis's office, the new SmackDown GM, as he made his debut last week. Did some pretty good stuff. So then, Jay Uso is brought into the office, where Adam Pierce is there. Like, you don't work here anymore. So Aldis is like, oh. It's like, okay, Jay. So you want to do this on my show? It's like, well, he first he throws him out. And then Pierce like, can't throw him out. And then Nick Aldis like, what's well, my show? It's like, okay, okay, I'll throw him out, but I'm going to fine him $10,000. Damn. And throws him out of the building. And Pierce is like, what? You can't do that. And then Nick Aldis like, oh, really? Gets it Adam Pierce's face. I'm like, oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Smackdown is just raw. So, Nick Aldis like, well, I can have you thrown out too, dude. And then Adam Pearce says, let the games begin. I'm like, oh shit, here we go. Smackdown versus Raw at Survivor Series War Games. Love it. I love it. So, gonna be, I would think it's gonna be Smack, uh, Smackdown. I don't know if Roman's gonna be in War Games, but he could. I think it's going to be SmackDown headed by Roman taking on possibly Team Judgment Day. I think going to have Finn, Priest, Dom, JD McFlurry, or McDoofus, McStupido, in there. And then you have a fifth guy, which could be Drew McIntyre. Then again, I don't know, but we'll see. Against, you know, Team, team Jimmy. Or Team Roman, you have Roman, Solo, Jimmy. And then you have two other guys. Or, you put Cena in there. And then you have... Well, uh, can't even do that because I smacked that. I can't have Cena in... Well, you, maybe you could, but... I was thinking Cena, Roman, Eli, Jimmy, Solo. You have enemies, enemies and friends on the same team against the same thing on Raw. But... I think it's gonna be like Judgment Day versus the Bloodline in in the Double Cage. That's gonna. I can't wait for Survivor Series now. I th- I thought it was just gonna be like you know Judgment Day versus Bloodline, but now we got a freaking war. No pun intended. War games at the Survivor Series. So they're really going back a few years to SmackDown versus Raw at the Survivor Series, and there's been a couple of years where Raw dismantles SmackDown. And then SmackDown, in turn, was a couple years, would beat the fuck out of Raw. And then I had that one year where Adam Goldbaby and company just dismantled the entire, both fucking brands. I think that was in 2000, uh, 2019, I believe. You know, so we had, you know, got away from the SmackDown vs. Raw Survivor Series, battle the brands, if you will. And now we're bringing it back. Now, it's Nick Aldis versus Adam Pearce. Which show is going to be better? I'll tell you the truth. SmackDown is going to win that night. I'll tell you that much. SmackDown, I think, is the better show. It's raw. All they got is freaking Drew McIntyre. Seth Rollins, Cody, J- uh, Jay. The Judgment Day. I mean, they got a pretty decent roster, but still. So we'll see what happens with that. So I gave that segment 3.25 out of 5 stars, and that's it. We move on. All right, let me take a drink. <clears throat> I'm going to whip my whistle. Let me move on. should have drank water. I should still drink water. I should drink water. All right, this uh, water break has been sponsored by Nature Brand Water. Nature Brand Water... The proud sponsor of life. Really, that's Nature Man Ice Tea. What's that?
I would gargle, but I'm not. Move on. All right, then we go to Logan Paul. Comes out looking like a douche for a little chitty chat. Talks about winning a fight in London six days ago. Yeah, you won by pulling the guy down in a freaking like. Yeah, that wasn't even a win. You didn't knock him out. He just basically, he just, like, he basically kind of fell into you, and then you just like grabbed him and threw him, and then you win. You're not a fighter, you suck. Your brother does too. I'd like to knock both of those idiots out. But I digress. So he says he won the fight six days ago. Even if it was a pathetic excuse for a fight, which it was. I mean, anybody could be Dylan uh, Dennis. Dude, what was his name? Dylan Dennis, whatever the fuck his name is. That fight was rigged anyway. Anyway, he says, if I wanted, wanted real competition, I should have come... Here, the WWE, well, came to the right place. Uh, he says, I got to beat up someone who hides behind the mask of the internet. And speaking of people who wear masks, but he's not here, it's Rey Mysterio. I'm not here for Rey. Then who are you here for? Who hides behind the mask of the internet? You, that's not Roman. You already know how you got smashed, stacked, and pinned by Roman. At last year's crown jewel, you want to do it again? We can do it again. Why not? This time you won't win. Again. So, fuck you, shut up. So he says, I'm not here for Ray. I already beat Ray in my first ever WWE match. And he goes, the last time I beat Ray, Dominic was still Ray's son, and Roman actually showed up to wrestle. Dude. You had to go there? Idiot. Anyway... Ray does have one thing that I want, though, and that is the coveted United States Championship. So then Logan says, I beat up a deadbeat dad last week, and I'll have to do it again at Crown Jewel. Ouch. So then, hey, my studio, we're studio, booyaka, booyaka, comes out looking like Batman slash Dragon Lee. Comes out, and, um... And says, Logan, you remind me of my, uh, my son, Dominic. He's not your son. First of all, Ray, he's not your son. We all know whose son he is. Eddie Guerrero, let's say. Right, Eddie? That's right, Dominic is my son. Why is Ray that Pendejo Cabron talking about him like that? He is not. Ray is not his son. That is not Ray's son. That is my son. Dominic is my son. I am his poppy! Not that com not that pendejo. True. It is true. No cap. No cap with Eddie Guerrero. Dominic is Eddie's son. That's it. Blah blah blah. And he says there is all the natural ability in the world, but he needs some uh, but Logan needs some humbling, he needs some humble pie. So, he says, I was a little hesitant to beat some sense into Dominic, but I won't hesitate to do it to you. So, he goes, you're on for Crown Jewel for the title. And then Ray starts talking in Spanish. It's like, Milasa, Milasa, something like that. And then, Paul responds with, good luck, friend, in, in Spanish. Yeah, nice. Uh, he says, I'm like, ooh, uh, Adios amigo, whatever it is, you know. That's the only Spanish you know? Did you did you pick that up at Taco Bell? I mean, you kind of are from Puerto Rico. Or you moved... You're not really from Puerto Rico, you live there. You're not from there, you're from California. You're a fake Puerto Rican. I'm just saying. I don't want to say the Easter because then Easter will probably get mad at me, but... He's from California. Wherever he grew up. He didn't grow up in Puerto Rico. No, grew up in Puerto Rico? Bad Bunny. Speaking of Bad Bunny, he's going to be on SNL tomorrow night. Well, later tonight. Well, tomorrow night. You know, Saturday Night Live. Can't wait for that. I'm not sure I might watch that. No, I got I to get, I get through three hours of collision. And then I'm going to, you know, stay up and have my, maybe a, uh, early, uh, my, well, not early, 
Might have might have a late dinner after that, and then, and then get ready for about you know eleven thirty. Bad Bunny's gonna host and be the musical musical guest. So I'm gonna watch an hour of S about an hour hour and a half of SNL, and then I'll do my uh, collision review. Go to bed. Issa's Issa's gonna um doing a watch along for her Demonites. I might be on there, but maybe maybe not. We'll see. My throat's really killing me. Hmm, I think I'm getting a cold. I don't know. Hope not. I know a lot of a lot of people are starting to get colds now. I mean, I hope you got your flu shot. I got mine like about a few weeks ago. I think. I guess it's not working. Cause I feel like I'm getting something. Then again, it could just be this draft this drafty house. I don't know. Rose is sick. Got sick today. Oh my god. Nah, had to be had to be a nice little boy. You know, we went we went out because I had errands to run. Got stressed out half the near, 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 near the day. It wasn't with about it wasn't stressed because you know, if me and Rosa had an argument or anything, we of course we didn't. It was just about something else. Not something else. I was on the phone for like an hour and a half with some uh, with some for something that I was trying to order something, and the freaking people felt like I'm talking to somebody from India. Would you like a squishy? I'm going to sell it for you for five dollars. You have to give me your credit card. No. Give me my order and shut the fuck up. But we don't understand your order. Alright, fuck you. Give me your supervisor. 20 minutes go by. Nothing. Hung up on the big. Hung up, hung up, uh, hung up on the guy. Then I call, I call again. I got a, I got a woman. And then somehow... The reception of my phone died. I'm like, what the fuck? So I had to wait. Until I got service back, and I got service back, and then called a third time, had a nice lady help me out, got my order done, boom, bing, boom, done. But an hour and a half, just to get something, something that I wanted, was I had to ask about it, because if it was in stock, which thankfully it was. But I had to talk to a, a dumb, a dumb fuck Indian guy, and then I had to talk to. I mean, sadly, the second person I called was nice to me, but then I lost the call. And I had to call him up again, but I wanted to get the same lady, but I got a different lady. It was very more nice than the second lady. Got on the phone real quick. Got my order done real quick, like five seconds done. I'm like, wow, that was quick. Like damn, can I can I can I give you a five star rating? So yeah, sure. So I gave her a five star rating. I joke, but it says, "Hey, can I give you ten stars?" Be like Dave Meltzer. <laughs> she saw She didn't like. She she laughed at my joke. But this was. But. Yeah, but. Yeah, don't when you try to order something or you're on the you're on the phone with a with a phone company and you're trying to fix your phone, you're trying to do whatever, you, whatever you you order you order from, you do not you do it over the phone. Please, for the love of God, if you get somebody that doesn't understand per, understand basic fucking English, hang up, hang up, call again. Hopefully, you don't get you don't get that person on the phone again. I mean. If you live in America, you come over from India, or you come over from another country, learn the language. Or get, go back. Or get out. Get the fuck out of here. We don't want you. Go back, go back to the border. I don't give a shit. Learn basic fucking English. You want to live here? Learn the language. Go to school. Take, take English as a second language. I know if it takes you takes you a year or two to learn it, then do it. 
They just come over here. You think you know? You, you know, like I don't understand the language. Then why are you here? To steal our money and our jobs, idiots! I really hope when Donald Trump wins the election next year, I hope he does. He builds that wall so all those the migrants don't come in, and anybody else coming from different countries or you know in Europe or whatever, they don't come here. Stealing our money and our jobs. I hope he fixes all this fucking shit. Biden is giving out more money to fucking Ukraine and to Thailand and, and now to Israel. I mean, I can understand Israel, but do we really need to send more money to Ukraine? And why are we sending money to Thailand? What's going on in Thailand? Who gives a shit? No wonder we have so much fucking inflation. We have so much this and that. No wonder healthcare sucks. Everybody can't even get on Medicaid. Thankfully, I, I, me and Rosa are, but, you know. People, people can't get on Medicaid. They've been waiting six, seven, eight months. I'm like, where am I going to get on Medicaid? And then, you know, they're waiting six, six, eight, six, to, six months to almost a year. And then they find out, it's like, oh, we, we can't put you on. Why didn't you tell me that four months ago? Moron. I really hope the next president would be Trump or DeSantis or whoever it is, probably most, most likely would be Trump. I really hope that Trump or whoever it is fixes the healthcare system. Go back to pre go back to pre pandemic days. You know? Fix fix food stamps, fix fix Medicaid, fix healthcare in general. Fix everything. Even even make unemployment year round. So when people you know people don't have to you know they go six months and then after six months they're like you know, we're out of money. Now you know it's hard. You know sometimes it's hard to find a job in this country. It's very hard, depending on what you want to do. But you know just take anything. And, you know you can you can you know you may not be skilled in cleaning. You know, cleaning an office or whatever, but, you know, got to do it. It's a job. They'll train you, but still, you know, you might not like it, but you have to accept it because it's a job. You got to pay bills and you got to put food on your table. I mean, it is what it is. But hopefully as we get into 2024, 2025, really, that this fucking country can be fixed. Medicare and med, Medicare, medic, well, health healthcare will be better. Everything will be better. Hopefully, when Donald Trump or somebody else wins the election next year, Sleepy Joe, you need to go to sleep. You need to get out, get out, get out of the White House. Take that bitch, come out of the house with you. I'm gonna make America great again, again. Trump's already doing great in, in um all the other states right now. He's like has a he's like fifty point lead over like other pe other Republicans and everything. And he has a, like a 10, 12 point twelve percent lead over Biden in general. I just hope we don't get an you know, he he's winning and then next thing you know, like two o'clock in the morning, all these freaking states are like, oh Biden won. Like, where did these votes come from? I don't need any. I don't, I don't want a repeat of 2020. We basically Trump had had the f freaking thing. He had it, had it won, and then next thing you know, what happened here? What? How did he win? Bullshit! Bullshit! We shouldn't be having the problems we have right now for the last oh, basically almost four years now. Shouldn't be having it. Why, well, I don't understand why we have an incompetent douchebag and possible pedophile Joe Biden in the White House with with basically a vice president that does, doesn't really do much. And that's Kamala Harris. Just sits there. Very good, Mr. President. Very good. And then you have Congress for douchebag Democrats. 
House of Representatives was like douchebags too. You know, these far far right, far left idiots. The government's a mess. They want you know we almost had a government shutdown, thankfully we didn't. Then we would talk about it again. I'm like, what's going on down there? Just fix fucking fix this fucking country, man. Fix it. Fix it! And I think the one man that can fix it is the great man Donald Trump. And I just hope he does it, man. I hope he does. I'm getting sick of this. We're at war with like 50 fucking countries. Ukraine's at war with Russia. Israel, uh, Israel's and, and Palestine and, and Hamas are going at it. Now, Iraq and Iran might be involved. I mean, it's crazy. I'm telling you, something bad is going to happen. Maybe by the end of the year or early into next year. In this country. Something bad. We might get another terrorist attack. I hope not, but I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen in this country again. I'm not, I'm not saying another 9-11. God forbid that, but... The way that things are going in other parts of the world... Who's to say that those countries can send rockets or nukes over to us? Remember when I said way back when? Global nuclear thermal war? War games? Matthew Broderick is right, you know, it's gonna happen. I have a feeling that's gonna happen someday. I thought it was gonna happen in 2015, but... Now, here we are in almost 2024, we're talking... You know, I'm talking about global th- thermal nuclear war again because all this fucking bullshit around the world. Everything's fucked up. Everything is fucked up in this con- in this world, you know? Migrants from different countries coming up when they shouldn't even be here because we have we have no... Our, our freaking foreign policy is garbage. The wall that Trump built, you know, didn't really get finished. By just letting all these idiots come in, I think all the all like all those all the major cities are getting freaking all overhauled, and we have to we have to put these these people in like like hotels and schools and parks and shit. It's stupid. Like every day, like we see a busload of migrants coming into New York City, or they're coming into Los Angeles, or coming into Miami or or Orlando, whatever. Send them back, man. Get them out of here. Build a wall, yay high, so these dumbasses can't even get through it. Put some like electric barbed wire on it, so they they try to climb it, they blow up. Fuck them. Fuck them. That's it. All right, move on. I don't want to talk about that. All right, blah 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 blah. All right, so Ray and. And Logan Paul make it official for a crown jewel for the United States title. And guess who's going to win? Logan Paul. Which sucks. But he might become the first celebrity in WWE history to win a belt. We'll see what happens with that. Let me move on. Alright, so I gave that 3 out of 5 stars. Then we go to a video on Charlotte and EO. I thought it was very nice. And then we go to, uh, this is, actually we had four matches, somehow I missed this one. Alright, so we have a tag team match that lasted six minutes. We had Cameron Grimes to the moon, teaming up with Dragon Lee to take on Austin Theory, A-Town Down, and his partner, I did it, Grayson Waller. They're undefeated. In tag team action. So this happened from last week. Where Cameron saved Dragon Lee. From Austin and Grayson. Blah 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 blah. Alright so. It's also with. Uh, with Dragon Lee taking over. On Grayson Wall to start. Everything breaks down all four men in the ring. They head to the outside. And then the heels are sent into into like a barricade. Every, everything around the ring. We go to, we go to early break. Come back. 
Cameron kicks away and sends Grayson to the floor. And then Dragon Lee, Dragon Lee hits a big flippy dippy 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 doo And then a flippy dippy doo power slam. Or oh, that, that twisting body slam of uh, of Cameron's uh, gets a near fall on Theory. And then Grayson Waller sends Dragon Lee into the announcer's table. Did I hit Michael Cole? Then he comes back in, grabs the running, the rolling downward spiral on Cameron, and then Theory comes in and finishes off Cameron with the eight town down. One, two, three, they stay undefeated as a tag team, but six minutes official, they get the win. Match gave 2.5 out of 5 stars, and that's pretty much it. Alright, then we go to a, a interview from early in the day with Kathy Kelly, looking hot as always, and she's talking to my boy, I'm wearing a shirt, by the way. Not, well, not his uh, WWE shirts, but I'm wearing a Ring of Honor shirt. Package power driver, everyone, baby. Kevin Steen. So he's, he's there. Nice, nice, yo, yo, go, Zona shirt. He's kind of upset at being split, split from his best buddy, Sami Zayn, so soon after losing the tag team belts a few months ago. Now Sammy's by himself. He kind of, kind of looks like he's turning heel. He doesn't, he, he doesn't like Jay Uso, but though he's his boy, now he's kind of like, uh, you know, you handle your business, I'll handle mine. Shit. With that being said, he's glad to be back on SmackDown with a clean slate. Talks about his history with the Bloodline, and he says, "Yeah, the sh the, sh the Yokozuna shirt is just a coincidence. Is he part of that annoy family?" Well, that, that lineage, I should say. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, Kev talks about the names that he hasn't faced around here. Like, uh, he mentioned, um... What did he mention? Um... On SmackDown, uh... Rey Mysterio, Dragon Lee, a couple other people. Then he asked Kathy Kelly who she wants him to punch. So, she says she has to be professional... But well, people do say that Austin Theory and Grayson Waller have punchable faces. Wow. Oh, it sucks to be you, Lick Grayson, and uh, Mr. Austin Theory. So you better watch out for uh, Kevin Steen's left or right hand, because I'll probably knock you out. And that's it. So I thought that was a pretty good in little interview with Kev. You know, seeing what he's going to be doing on SmackDown, whenever that may be. Probably be at War Games. Maybe he's in the War Games match. Who knows? So I gave that 3 out of 5 stars, and that's it. Alright, then we go to the big one, the main event of the evening. For the SmackDown Women's title, we had the lovely EO, Sh EO Sky, my third wife, taking on horseface bitch Charlotte Flair. Uh, we had Bailey, give me a hug, and a new look Dakota Kai, as she, uh, you know, she had that, like, different color hair. Not Rainbow Bright Tegan Knox hair, but she had different color hair. Now she dyed it all black because uh, she's from New Zealand and she's doing it in in um in honor of the New Zealand soccer team or whatever it is. Blah blah blah. We go to commercial 17 seconds in. That was stupid. Kevin, whoever did that, Kevin Don, was that you? Why don't you go to commercial 17 seconds into the goddamn match? Dumb. So anyway, if this was a pretty good match. Back and forth, they went. Uh, Io, uh gets planted face first on the apron. Ow. Go back in. EO hits a sunset flip bomb for a near fall. Fall body running knees in the corner. I thought she was going to, you know... Beat her there, but she locks in a cross face. Charlotte uh, reverses that into a real barrel suplex. Then just back to back four away slams, followed by a super Samoan drop for a near fall. But EO uh, slips out of the walls of Jericho, avoids a knee to her own knee. Goes for the over the moon salt, but Charlotte got the knees up. Then hits a, uh, hits a pretty decent spear for a, for a near fall as Bailey puts the foot on the rope. Thank God you didn't fuck it up there, Bailey and the Kodakai, even though the Kodakai really didn't do much. 
Uh, Charlotte goes after Bailey. He goes around the ring, starts beating up on the outside. Referee's like, stop it! I'm like, why don't you counting counting her out? Give EO the win by by count out. Dumb. But I guess we needed a winner. So then when that's going on, Dakota Kai gets on the apron, causing another distraction, and then we see EO with her belt. I thought she was gonna go for a head, you know, a belt shot to the head, but she held it up. And then Charlotte tries with another spear, and EO blocked it with a title belt. Ow, that, that reminded me of Goldberg spearing Bret Hart back in WCW after, I think it was like after he knocked him out, gave him that, that concussion that really ended his career. Or maybe it was before or after, whatever it was. And then Bret Hart had that steel plate underneath his belly, knocked Goldberg out for, you know, for a loop. So I kind of, kind of did that to Charlotte, and EO just like throws the belt out to discard the evidence, and then pins Charlotte. One, two, three. She retains the SmackDown Women's Championship in over in basically 16 minutes. Match was pretty good. It gave it 3.25 out of five stars. And then after the match, uh, EO and well, kind of EO was kind of a little tired, but even though she joined in on the beatdown with Bailey. And the code is kind of like directing traffic and everything. Then we hear the music of Bianca Belair. She's Bianca Belair. She plays with her hair. That's actually her hair. She's Bianca Belair. She's back after her storyline injury to her knee. You know, she did ask for time off. They gave it to her. Now she's back. She, run, she runs out and beats up, beats up uh, Bailey and EO. Tries to do the KOD to EO. And thankfully, Bailey saved her, but in in return, she got the KOD and lays Bailey out, and then EO had to take her out. So, Bianca's back, saves Charlotte to end the show, and then, well, then we see Bianca that go up to Charlotte, and Charlotte's like, you know, a little fist, fist bump. So, it looks like next week on the program, we're going to get Charlotte and Bailey. Excuse me, Charlotte and Bianca teaming up against EO and Bailey. I mean, God forbid we get we get Bianca and, and EO again. I don't want to see that. Because if we do see that, maybe at the Survivor series, if if you know the, if uh, not all those four all those those four ladies are in war games, which I hope not. I think it's gonna be team team uh you know Ma, uh Rhea Ripley's gonna have a team against I don't know whose team maybe EO damage control in it I don't know but I mean we'll have to see but I'm thinking we're gonna see EO versus Bianca and I and I think I think Bianca's finally gonna get a rematch I think she's gonna win the belt which sucks. I really like to have EO hold hold it all the way to WrestleMania, then maybe lose it to Oscar. When Oscar's WrestleMania moment, she finally gets her first win. She'll be one and six. She's always she has a rest, won at WrestleMania since she debuted way back when. I think that's stupid. So I'd rather have EO and Oscar go at it for a possible, I think, a third time. Or well, second time, a third time. And then Oscar outright. Pins EO. Or maybe it's not Oscar. Maybe eh, maybe Kyrie faces EO. I would eh, I would love to see that, but I think EO and Kyrie are friends. So how will that work? Well, I guess you can still have EO be heel, and then you have Kyrie come in and be like Oscar's, you know, bodyguard or whatever. You know, I was like, oh, I gotta, I have Plan B. I was holding off on it for three months. Still haven't seen Kyrie yet. But I think Kyrie's gonna debut, well, re debut at the Survivor Series. And, you know, another guy's gonna de- come back at the Survivor Series? Randall Keith Orton, Mr. RKO himself. He's coming back around Thanksgiving weekend, so. Who's to say he's not coming back at SmackDown? Or he might might be coming back at the Survivor Series. Maybe at the end of Survivor Series. Or maybe he's in War Games himself. 
Now I am getting a cold. I feel like I'm getting something. So I want to try to end this video right now. So anyway, that ends the show. Uh, so I gave EO and Charlotte 3.25 out of 5 stars. Bianca comes back. We'll see what happens with her next week. Possible tag team match with her and Charlotte against EO and Bailey. We'll see what happens with that. And that is it for SmackDown. So SmackDown I thought was pretty solid. And I gave it a solid 7 out of 10 stars. But let me know what you guys think of the show down below in the comments section. And also you can do a video, video, your own video if you wish. Uh, leave a comment down below. Like I said, uh, smash that like button. The death. Stick it straight up everybody else's ass. And uh, don't forget to hit the bell. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next video. And follow me on social media. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And um, that's pretty much it for that. Alright everybody. Thanks for watching. It is late. Again, you know, another late night here in in New York. So I'm going to get the, I'm going to, I'm going to end here. I'm going to go to bed and then tomorrow I'm going to do a whole ton of videos tomorrow. So I'm going to be a little bit busy this weekend. So tomorrow I'm going to do my tribute to Paulie from the Rocky movies. I'm going to do that first. Really quick video. Then I'm going to do Ring of Honor over on the Kill Demons channel. And then also Rampage once again on the Kill Demons channel. And then Late tomorrow night, my f possible fourth video of the night, my collision review, and I will do Battle of the Belts 8 separately on Sunday. That will end the week. And then, and then that's pretty much it. Then um, Monday, we start a new week. Raw, SmackDown, NXT, uh, Dynamite, Rampage, Collision, all next week. Uh, got Imp uh, Impact Wrestling got uh, Bound for Glory tomorrow night. I may watch some of it uh, in the replay, but we'll see. I'm not going to review it, but should be a good show, you know. One of the, big the biggest pay-per-view of the year, basically, is Bound for Glory. So, Impact Wrestling still doing some good shit. They put PCO, Steve Macklin... Um, Moose, and I forget the other guy. I think it was, no, not Josh. Um, they put another guy, I think, oh, Rhino, in these rooms for 24 hours with no bread, no water, no cell phone service. They can't do anything. I thought that was really weird before their match at Bound for Glory. So they're going to, like, put them there in this dark room where they have no food, not, they basically have nothing. Feels like you're in, well, not in jail because they feed you in jail. But basically, they don't give you your bread and water. You, you're there for 24 hours, so they're going to starve for a day. That's crazy. And then they're going to have this four way monsters ball match. It's going to be brutal. And I think the winner gets a title shot. But, I mean, we'll have to see what happens with that. But, we got title shots. Josh Alexander against uh, Alex Shelley for the Impact World Title should be good. I, I don't. I. I really think Josh Josh Alexander will get the belt back. But we'll see. We'll see if Alex Shelley can retain. Um, I think we got Crazy Steve against Tommy Dreamer for the Digital Media Title. Probably see Crazy Steve win that. Um, I think the tie titles are on the line. With the bu bu Bullet Club. You know, Chris Bay and Ace um, Ace Austin. Should be a good match. I forget who they're facing, but should be a good match. Uh, really, I think the match of the night is going to be Naomi and Mickey James for the Impact Knockouts title. That's going to be great. See if Mickey can win it, I think, for the, uh, the eighth or ninth time. I forget how many times she's held that belt in Impact. I don't think she's going to win. I think Naomi's going to win and continue on with a nice little reign that she has and see who beats her. I hope it's Rosemary, but we haven't seen Rosemary in months. She's still kind of dead in the undead realm. I don't even know if she's even going to be on a show with, uh, you know, with Jessica in the 
Dead dolls, dead dolls, dead dolls! You know, Miss Rush. So. She would have to die. I mean, we all miss Rosemary. We all do. I do. Yeah. Yeah, but I have to, you know. I mean, I don't watch Impact a lot, but, you know, they when I do, I mean, they show Courtney and they show Jessica Havoc. You know, in some matches, and I'm like, you know, seeing Courtney Rush just, you know, you see Rosemary as who she really is, Courtney Rush. And I'm like, eh, it's good, but I miss Rosemary. Mm. I mean, she does, sh she does put on the face paint at, at conventions and stuff, but really, most of the time, it's rare. And now she's doing just, you know, Courtney Rush is doing conventions and everything, but. I mean, it's not, I mean, if I, I really want to meet Rosemary someday, but still, I mean, if it's without the face paint and it's just Courtney Rush, that's fine. Still, I don't really want to see you. I want to see Rosemary, my demonic bride, my demon assassin, the one who gave the prophecy the freaking name, man. Put a stamp of approval on it. I'll show the video too, man. It's like. I don't think you remember this, but you we you liked my my tweet when I said the prophecy. What did I say? The prophecy is real or some shit like that. And then I just ran with it. And then I met your arch nemesis, you know, Miss Abaddon, right over there. I mean, I got James Mitchell. All I got, really got to get is Rosemary and Sue Young. Then I have the entire dark side of the prophecy. That's it, man. I I have I I, I could have had Sue Young a couple of years ago, but she was at a, at um I think it was FBW or FSW show. She was wrestling, and then uh, you know, she I thought she was gonna do a meet and greet. I had the money to to, to get the autograph. I go up to, to her table and I ask the guy, is Sue Young coming out to do autographs or anything? He's like, oh yeah, she'll be out. Never came out. She, the only time she came out was for the match, and I just took a picture. And I'm like, that, I mean, yeah, that's great and all. That's great and all, but I like to, you know, take a picture with her. Maybe her, have her, like, do, you know, try to bite me or something like that. I don't know which swan might like that, but... They're still together, I'm not sure. But anyway, I mean, I don't want to meet Susie. I want to meet Sue Young. I want to meet, I want to meet the, the undead bride. Never like, <sighs> you know, she does one of those, you say, like, like, you can do one of those weird faces next to me. I'll just be like, And then I gotta meet Rosemary, and Rosemary can, like, um, you know, do some weird faces with me. I don't know. But, anyway, we got that. So, Impact, Battle for Glory tomorrow. Should be a good show tomorrow night on pay-per-view. I mean, if you want to watch that, great. If you want to watch Collision and Battle of the Belts, great. Do that. But, all in all, should be a great, uh, great weekend of, uh, Sports action, you got college football still going on, hockey still going on, and we're Rangers stunk up the joint Thursday night at home. And I was there, and it sucked. Lost to Nashville, played like shit. Now they're on there, I think they're going, um, I think tomorrow. I think, tomorrow, I think tomorrow, Sunday, they play on the West Coast. I think they play Anaheim. They play, I think they play in. I think they play Anaheim, then they go to Calgary and Edmonton. So basically on a West Coast slash Canada tour. Or Canada run, I should say, next week. Before they come home again. But it's early, I think it's like the third game. Yeah, actually, I think it's the third or fourth game. You know, they're, you know, got about four or five points right now. They're not doing too bad. It's early, so I'm not worried right now. Not too worried about about any of that, but in any case, that's the, that's that. And I hope you have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe. 
be well. I know it's going to be a little bit rainy here in the northeast. It was pouring today. I think it's supposed to rain again tomorrow, which sucks. It's going to get a little bit colder. But by early next week, by the middle of next week, it's going to be back up to 71 degrees. And right right through next uh, early next right through next weekend. And then by Halloween, it'll probably be back down to like the low low 60s, maybe upper 50s to low 60s by Halloween. And then when we get to November, then it's going to start getting cold. It's going to start, you know, we're not probably not going to see 70 for a long time. But, I mean, stranger things have happened, you know. We've had, we've had uh, warm as fuck winters where, I mean, it got warm here. I got like 80 something degrees on my birthday one day. I was like, damn, it's 80 here on Christmas. It's like, what is this, California? Is this Miami? Phoenix? Where are we? No snow. I think it was 80, and then, like, right after the New Year, it started snowing. But, looks like this year here in New York is going to be not so good, Al. I think we're going to get nor'easters, we might get some blizzards. I'm like, oh, good thing I got the snow melt. But, the way, you know, with my back the way it is right now, and I'm just a mess right now, and Rose is even worse. It's going to be going to be really tough to freaking dig out. You know, I'm going to clear a pathway for me and Rosa to get out of the goddamn house. You know, unless, unless my, my, my neighbors help out, which they usually do. But. That is all I got to say about that. So thanks for watching. Once again, have a great weekend. I'll see you guys tomorrow for a lot of videos. So hit the bell. On my on the Kill Demons channel, uh, on this channel actually, because this is Clone Demons, so so do that, and that's pretty much it. All right, I'm going to bed. It's really late now. I'm getting really tired. I'm about to zonk out. So thanks for watching, everybody. And if you're not down with that, I'm Peter Joseph signing off. Once again, rock on, uh, rock on, and rock hard with your cock out. You know that. And uh, if you're not down with that, well, go fuck yourselves. And we got three words for you. Fuck you, man. That's it. Until next time, motherfuckers. Peace.